this lecture is going to introduce us to the idea of a term symbol and this really gets at the electronic state of compounds and in particular we're going to think about the electronic spectra of coordination compounds hopefully by now one of the things you know is a lot of the colored material we see in everyday life the, that color comes from electronic transitions and often it comes from electronic transitions involving d electrons um, a couple examples of this as shown on the slide is we can see the red color in a ruby actually comes from the presence of chromium-3 ions within the lattice of an aluminum oxide matrix. Amethysts are violet, and this is due to the iron-3 and iron-2 and a little bit of titanium-4 that's also in an aluminum oxide crystal. And finally, we, we know that blood is red, and that red color comes from the, the hemoglobin, and in particular, it comes from the iron in the heme unit and the electronic transitions of that iron. Um, so these colors from the electron transitions um, allow us a chance to study the uv vis spectra of complexes, which is in, in turn going to give us information on the electronic configuration of the complex. So a little background here and a couple um, points we're going to look at. Um, uv vis spectra can be explained by understanding the electronic transitions involved. And a couple of things we're often looking for is what electron is changing energy. So what is the actual electronic transition, which gets at what orbitals are involved? What's the ground state and what's the excited state? So we often talk about electronic transitions. In an atom, electrons influence each other. And so Often it's more useful instead of thinking about a single electron and its move, but to think about an electronic state of a molecule. What is the ground electronic state of a molecule and what is the excited electronic state of a molecule? And the way we're going to sort of summarize an electronic state is through the use of what we call a term symbol. A term symbol will describe an electronic state and it'll actually describe a collection of degenerate electronic states. Um, and we can say it's going to be excited from a ground state term symbol to an excited state term symbol. Um, to give a little idea of what we mean by this, and before we start defining term symbols more, let's go back to a simple example that we've already talked about. And let's just consider the electron configuration in a P2 system. So this might, for instance, be carbon with two P electrons. So we could ask ourselves, how are the electrons arranged if we have an electron configuration of 2p2? And we talked about this earlier in the semester, and one of the things I hope you remember is there are a few different ways we can arrange the electrons, but they're not all equal in energy. So two of our ways we can arrange the electrons, and there are others, are shown here. And on these electron energy diagrams, I also put the m sub l values, our electronic quantum numbers, for each of the p orbitals. So remember, our p orbital has a l quantum number of 1, which means the m sub l goes from negative 1 to 1. This gives us three different p orbitals. And so in the case on the left, we see that the electrons are spin paired in the first p orbital. And in the case on the right, the electrons are parallel spin in two different p orbitals. Hopefully you also remember that the, the system on the right is the lower energy state. That's the lowest energy ground state of the system. Each of these potential different electronic configurations is called a microstate. And it turns out if we drew them all out, if you arrange those two electrons, spin up and spin down in all three of those orbitals in every possible permutation, we'd come up with a total of 15 different microstates many of which have different energies, but some of them have the same energy. So some of these are actually degenerate. And when we talk about electronic transitions, we have to understand that we're going to be talking about electronic transitions from a set of degenerate microstates to another set of degenerate microstates. So for instance, we could have an electronic transition that goes from the right microstate, that is parallel spins and opposite p orbitals, to the left microstate where we have a spin paired in the same p orbital. All right. Independently, we hopefully remember that each electron can have six possible quantum numbers. I drew them out here. So L is 1, so m sub L is a negative 1, 0, 1. And our m sub s, a, 
uh, spin up or spin down has values of plus one half or minus one half. Um, but in an atom, these electrons are not independent. The energies of the electrons will affect the other electrons. And what that is referring to is often called Russell Sanders coupling or also LS coupling, the manner in which electrons affect the energy of others. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this in a little bit. So now we can bring up this idea of a term symbol. And we're going to draw some analog analogies to our um, electronic configurations and electronic, electronic quantum numbers that we defined earlier. We know that within an atom, there are four unique quantum numbers that define every electron in an atom. And we can write out electron configurations for atoms that describe all of the electrons in that atom. When we were thinking about an entire atom, electronic state and electronic transitions, we're often considering the arrangement of all of its electrons. One way of doing that is to write out its electronic configuration in full. Uh, but what we're going to see is more useful for us and more useful for spectroscopists is to think about this idea of a term symbol. And that term symbol is going to describe the relative orientation of the angular momenta that arise from a particular electronic configuration. This is giving a lot of information. It doesn't replace electronic configurations, but it's another way of looking at the electronic configurations in a way that's more useful, especially in spectroscopy, um, to think about the energetic states of an atom. And the term symbol will tell us things like how many electrons are unpaired, what their spin is, um, etc. So real quick, let's go back and review our electron quantum numbers. So we should remember there's four electronic quantum numbers, and we can you can pause the slide at the end and review this if you need. The first one is the principal quantum number, lowercase n, integer values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. This determines the major energy and the size. The second quantum number is the angular momentum quantum number, script L. This is to, can describe the angular dependence. We talk about this as shape. Remember the values of L depend on n, so from 0 to n minus 1. And we refer to these by their letter abbreviation, S, P, D, F, G, etc. Then we have the M sub L. This tells us how many of a set of orbitals there are, um, values from negative L to L. And then we have our spin quantum number, which is either spin up or spin down, which we refer to as um, plus or minus one half. Those are electronic quantum numbers. What we're going to now talk about is atomic quantum numbers. So in electronic quantum numbers, the four quantum numbers define an electron. We're going to now come up with a new set of quantum numbers that define the electronic arrangement, or really angular momentum, of our atom. A key point when we think about this is electronic quantum numbers that you're used to are always lowercase. Atomic quantum numbers are always uppercase letters. They're always capital letters. And so here are the atomic quantum numbers. The total orbital angular momentum quantum number, capital L. The total spin quantum number, capital S. The total angular momentum quantum number, capital J. We won't do too much with J, we'll mention it, but you can go back to your physical chemistry notes for more information. And then we have capital M sub capital L and capital M sub capital S. And both of these describe a particular microstate. And we'll talk about those in a second. All right. So that first quantum number, capital L, is the total orbital angular momentum quantum number. Um, L is an integer value from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And just like lowercase l, this has letter abbreviations. And these are capital letters, but again, you can see when L is 0, it's a capital S. When L is 1, it's a capital P. When L is 2, it's a capital D, and so on. S is the total spin quantum number. And this can have values of, again, since we're dealing with electron spins, we can start off with 0, where all electrons are spin paired. Or we could have a spin of 1 half, 1, 3 halves, 2, etc. The other thing that comes out of the spin quantum number is this 
this thing that we refer to as the spin multiplicity. And the spin multiplicity is simply put is equal to 2s plus 1. And so the value of the spin multiplicity can either be 1, 2, 3, 4. These are going to be integer values from, um, going up. And we refer to them as singlet, doublet, triplet, quartet. So if the spin multiplicity is 1, we refer that refer to that as a singlet state. If it's 2, we refer to it as a doublet state, and so on. And this is giving us information about how many unpaired electrons are in a particular spin state. So those are our first two quantum numbers. The two other key ones that we will deal with are the total orbital angular momentum quantum number, capital M sub capital L, and these have integer values from L to negative L. And we have to see the same thing with m sub s, where we have our integer values of s to negative s. Now, about m sub l and m sub s, let's go back and draw some comparisons to our electronic quantum numbers. In our electronic quantum numbers, in that blue box in the lower right, we, we remember that n and l describe a collection of orbitals. For instance, the 3p orbitals, or the 4d orbitals, um, whereas m sub l and m sub s define a particular electron in those orbitals. So if m sub l is 1 and m sub s is plus 1 half, that describes a particular orientation of a single electron. We see the same thing with our atomic quantum numbers. Capital L and capital S describe a collection of microstates, so a group of degenerate electronic configurations. Capital M sub S and capital M sub L dis define a particular microstate among that set. All right, let's look at an example. So let's go back to our 2p2 electronic configurations that we started off this lecture with. And in the top case, we have two spin paired electrons in the first p orbital with an m sub l value of 1. What we're going to do is we're going to determine what are the values of capital M sub l and capital M sub s in each of these systems. And at the top of the slide, you can see that the both in both cases, the way you calculate the capital M sub l and capital M sub s is we just sum the electronic quantum numbers, lowercase m sub l and lowercase m sub s. So in that first case, where both electrons are spin paired and m sub l orbital equals 1, we can think about this as one of the electrons is a value of l with a spin up, and the other is a value of l equals 1 spin down. Um, another way you will see this abbreviated is writing 1 plus comma 1 minus. That means the same thing. They're both in the, val in the m sub l orbital of 1, and the first one is spin up. And the first one is spin down. So then if we sum these together, we can see that m sub l of this particular electronic configuration equals 2, 1 plus 1 is 2, and m sub s is plus 1 half um, plus a negative 1 half, so m sub s is 0. In our second case, now we have the orbitals in two different m sub l values, and they're both spin up. And we can also write this as 1 plus comma 0 plus. And here we would see that the m sub l equals 1 and the m sub s also equals 1. So we can start to see how these quantum numbers are defining the different microstates of our atom. If we want to determine the electronic transitions and the term symbols involved, we actually have to do this and define our quantum numbers for every single possible microstate, and we'll have to figure out how to do that um, in the next lecture. But before we get there, let's introduce this idea of the quantum, the term symbol. Or sometimes you'll hear it referred to as the free ion term, and sometimes you'll hear it as the term symbol. The term symbol combines the quantum numbers into a term that describes the relative orientation of the angular momentum. And it takes the form that's shown here on the page. What we see is the quantum number L is the heart of the term symbol. And then a superscript to the left of L is the spin multiplicity. And then if we're con concerned with our J quantum number, that's a subscript to the right of our term. 
So this is the format of the term symbol. Let's look at a couple examples. And so we have two quantum. So let's look at two examples. We have our singlet S and doublet P term symbols, and we can determine the values of the four quantum numbers in each of these term symbols. In the singlet S case, L is equal to zero, and we know that because it is an S term. The spin multiplicity, the spin is equal to one, and remember, spin multiplicity is 2s plus 1, so that means s must also be 0. And then we can see if l equals 0, m sub l is all values from negative l to l, so m sub l has to also equal 0, and m sub s has to equal 0 because it is all values from s to negative s. So we can see here it is written out. We can then go to the second term, our doublet p, and in the doublet p case, we know that L is equal to one. Now if L is equal to one in this case, then M sub L has three potential values. It has values of one, zero, and negative one. This is a doublet P, so the spin multiplicity is two. If the spin multiplicity is two, that means S has to be one half. So two times a half plus one equals two. And then we can see that if s is 1 half, the m sub s value can be positive 1 half or minus 1 half because it's all values from s to negative s. The other thing to take note of, that means that doublet p case actually describes six microstates because we have three different m sub l cases and we have two different m sub s cases. So if we just multiply the number of m sub l states by the number of m sub s, sta m sub s states, we'll get the total number of microstates. So doublet p describes six degenerate microstates, whereas singlet s describes a single microstate.